Since 2000, coral reef biologist Nancy Knowlton of the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History and her colleague Don Levitin of Florida State University have been making yearly trips to Panama's Caribbean coast. They time their visit with a mass coral spawning that happens once a year, just days after the September full moon. The three coral species involved in the event are hermaphrodites, meaning they release bundles containing both eggs and sperm, but they can't self-fertilize. To ensure reproductive success, it is important that the corals release their gametes in sync with neighboring corals of the same species. Scientists have found that the corals coordinate their spawning using three cues, the full moon and sunset, which they sense through photoreceptors, and most likely a pheromone that allows them to smell each other. 80% of corals in the Caribbean have been destroyed in the last 30 years, and the looming question is, what will happen to fertilization rates as coral colonies become fewer and farther between? On nights when the spawning is expected to happen, Nancy, Don, and a team of research divers scan their study site, an 80-meter stretch of reef just 20 minutes by boat from the Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute's Bocas del Toro Field Station. The researchers recognize a coral colony as setting when it becomes pimpled with yellowish gamete bundles. They crack a red glow stick, place it near the coral, and record the time. Soon the reef starts to look like a garden of red tulips. Typically, about 20 minutes after setting, the coral colonies start spawning. Each colony is dotted with individual coral mouths that release single bundles, two millimeters in diameter, into the water. They lift in unison and fill the water column. For the few minutes they are suspended in the water, it feels like swimming in a snow globe. 